today we are doing an inked chibi commission of a cute little girl named Samantha and her adorable mudkip with a bandana. So the supplies we're going to use for today are, sorry, grabbing my mic. I got a new computer and it is super crazy loud. Okay, so cardstock, non-photo blue pencil, a food aid pen, and if you're looking for tutorials or reviews of food aid pens to help you find the one that's best for you, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com. A larger food aid pen, this is the Sakura Pigma in BB, BB meaning big brush, and an eraser. All right, so we're gonna start out by sketching this kiddo from reference. And I, out of respect for her privacy, I am not going to show her. Um, and what I usually do when I'm doing a chibi commission is, um, so we need a line of action. Then I'm gonna sort of block in her torso. And there's some schmutz under my paper. So pelvic uh, line and then the rib cage. And I'll zoom in because you guys can't super see that, unfortunately. And neck, uh, where her neck's gonna go. And skeleton legs for her, skeleton a skeletal view for her legs just to sort of knock them in. Sorry, I'm having trouble wording this morning. And then, so she's holding a mudkip. So I have mudkip reference up on my computer already. I came prepared. You guys know that doesn't always happen. So we sketch in our cute little mud cap. And we do that because he's got some appendages that could theoretically block what we're drawing. Okay, so skeletal view of her arms and then her head. So this is the chibi blocked in. Now we're gonna start tightening it up so it looks more like a person. But I pretty much draw all of my all of my figures this way, from like super cartoony stuff to uh, fairly detailed stuff to some of the realistic portraits that I've done over the years. It all kind of starts the same way. And I already did a warm up drawing this morning, so I should be good to start sketching. G two G. So now we're gonna do the face. And I have other chibi tutorials here on the channel that you guys can check out. So I followed that sphere and then I did the front plane of the face. That's where the eyes are gonna go. That's where the hairline's gonna go. Sketching in the eyes, I draw the invisible third eye. It helps me place the other two. That's where the eyebrows are gonna go. Nose, mouth, basically do a C for the ear. Now I'm gonna start tightening up the rest of the figure. And if you hear my lead snap, or if you notice that it snaps a lot, it's because I'm drawing almost directly on glass. I really need to put like um, a protective board underneath, sort of cushion all the pressure I tend to put down. I'm fairly heavy handed. So I use cylinders, um, which, so for the thigh, it starts out thick at the thigh and then narrow at the knee. And then from the knee to the ankle, it starts out narrow at the knee and then thick at the ankle. I'm getting really annoyed by all the little bumps under this. I'm gonna have to pull it up and replace it. So similar for the arms, except I stay pretty narrow in the arms until we get to the wrists where they go wide again because I draw big hands on my chibi figures. I think those are fairly cute. And see, I'm not developing any particular thing um, any sooner than any other thing. So I try to keep everything pretty much at the same stage. 
also. I do the same crosshair on the face for the mud kip. Mark off where his little axolotl ear fluffs will be. And I love that she picked Mudkip because I really, really like all of the amphibian and reptile Pokemon. I think they're really cute. And Mudkip is one of the cutest because he looks like an axolotl. All right, so sketching his little ear fin tuft cute things. Not fin, gill. I know axolotl those would be gills. Oh, he's cute. Oh, he needs a bandana. Where are we gonna put the bandana? Because our hands are kind of holding him. I guess we can just sketch the bandana on top of her hands like this. Oh yeah, cutie. And then she's wearing shorts. So I'll sketch those in and a Vest, like a little vest sweater thing over her t-shirt. And then for her hair, she's got it side parted. And I usually go with pretty simple cartoony hair for most of the things I draw. So very simple block in shapes. So pretty simple. We've got two main hair masses, the one that goes to the left, the one that goes to the right. And then she's wearing, looks like Converse's without socks. So, or the socks have like kind of slid into the shoes. So sketch those in. So we've got everything but her face sort of sketched out, which is good. Now we're gonna work on her face. So we've got heavier eyelashes on the top and then lighter lower lashes. All right, so we've got everything, whoops, basically sketched out. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start tightening the sketch. Okay, so now it's time to start tightening up some of the details. Sometimes I will work really tight and then ink on that. And then sometimes I'll work a little bit looser and let my pin do a lot of the work. And it kind of just depends on how confident I'm feeling. So basically if I've drawn like, you know, 30 chibi illustrations that day for a convention, I will probably go uh, straight to inks from this phase and just tighten up as I go along. I'm moderately confident with my Fude pin. Uh, there are definitely some artists who can do almost all of their work in pin, which I really admire because it um, probably saves them a lot of... It just, seems, whoa, come on. it just seems like it saves them a lot of time. Unfortunately, I don't... I. I do practice sketching in pen pretty often, and that helps with that sort of thing, but I don't practice, say, doing chibi illustrations, so I'm not quite as confident doing something like this as I would be doing, say, urban sketching or doodling while I'm out on the town with a pen. So you sort of get good at what you practice. Aw, the Chewbacca shirt's really cute. Sort of sketch him in there. Don't want to do too detailed with that because it'll detract away from the whole. So when you're simplifying, you need to sort of simplify universally. Wiggle, wiggle, little mud kip. I always like drawing mud kips as though they were cats in that it doesn't want to be held ever, but it's not gonna like bite you. Getting done, getting finished on this. Both stages are fun, but for some reason the inking stage is often the most fun. And then when I do chibi, I like to do like really big, chunky, cute laces on, really? Ooh, 
laces on the shoes. I'm like almost done, just come on. Oh well, almost done with you, pencil. Just gotta stick it out. That is about that for the sketch. Now we're gonna start inking and I'm gonna primarily use my favorite inking utensil. This is a Kuratake Furego Kochi. I have used these for like six or seven years now. I discovered them while I was a master's student at SCAD. And um, for me, they're great because they have a lot of flexibility and they're fairly durable. They're fairly inexpensive. I get mine through Amazon. Um, and you can find a link in the description below. But I, you know, good enough is never good enough for me. So in 2015, I reviewed like 30 different brush pins to see if this was still my favorite. And honestly, for these sort of things, it really still is. So I really recommend this, but I also recommend you read through some of my reviews if you're interested in easy inking utensils. And maybe you can find one that's a better fit for you. So we're gonna go ahead and get started inking. And I like to work from front to back. So I'm gonna start on the things that are in front of our um, the girl we're drawing. So I'm gonna start on the mud kit. And what's cool about the Fudego Kochi is that, um, and I don't like doing this while I'm talking because it messes up my ability to pull different line weights, but with just a little bit of variation in pressure, you can get a much different weight on your line. So you can get a really bouncy, cartoony look, which I happen to really like. Um, I know that it's, it's sort of more of a shonen aesthetic than say a shoujo aesthetic, those bouncy energetic lines, but it's something that I really like. And say I'm talking like I'm doing right now, and I don't like the line I put down, um, I'm gonna go back in with a white gel pen and lighten some of those lines up a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna just do his whole little bandana black, and then I'm gonna do designs on top of it. I think that'll help him stand out a little bit more. So you'll have to forgive me if I get quiet while I'm inking. I pull better lines if I'm not talking. I also like to do broken lines like this at the top of an image um, to imply a light source. I'm gonna have to clean that one up a little bit. I didn't ink it perfectly. Some of those lines are really bugging me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my color Eno. And something else, not color, no, I'm sorry, my uh, Signal white gel pen. Something else to be aware of is if you have hot hands and it's actually very hot in my studio today, um, it'll make the ink in this thinner and um, it can be harder to control and more likely to get thick and blobby and kind of unattractive. So um, I generally prefer to ink where it's slightly cooler. And it's also important for your eye health to try and ink in good lighting. It can be really hard to see what you're doing if you're inking in low lighting. And um, it might seem like an easy thing now, like, oh, you know, I have no problem seeing this, but your eyesight does deteriorate with age and um, it really doesn't take that long for you to start noticing that you can't see as well as you used to. So I do want to encourage you, especially those of you who are much younger, to do what you can to protect your eyesight. Because once it starts to go, it's actually really frustrating. <laughs> so I'm just kind of lightening up, going over some of these lines, cleaning them up a little bit since it is hot in here. And they did get kind of blobby. 
I'm also gonna do a cute little paisley pattern on the Mudkip's bandana, and hopefully that'll make it more obvious that it's a bit, uh, la it's a bandana. You can always tighten this again with your black ink pen. But you have to let it dry first. Oh, I'm off camera a little bit. I apologize for that. Wanted to make sure I got her eyebrows just right. All right, gonna grab my larger brush pen, fill in her eyes. My kid's head is bothering me. I really want to fix it. But that's going to have to wait. I've mentioned this on the channel before, but portraits are actually one of my favorite things to do, especially in cartoony styles like this. They are a lot of fun. And it's really neat to see how people translate to a cartoony style. And I'm using this Sakura Pigma big brush, brush pen. And it's got um, a solid foam brush instead of individual bristles. I really enjoy using this for fills because you still get a lot of control and flexibility, but you can cover an area really quickly. And this marker actually happens to be uh, alcohol marker, like Copic marker proof and waterproof. So I use the Sakura Big Brush a lot in my work. There we go. What? <clears throat> Wanted to clean up that hairline. All right, working on the sneakers before I do the leg. Clean it up just a little bit. All right. So I was still really bugged by Mudkip's head. So I'm gonna do a little surgery, fix him up a little bit. Okay, that looks better. And I need to let that dry before I can do another pass. So I'm just tightening up, adding a little bit of drop shadow. And that's where I wanted to Paint up his bandana. So I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. And then I'm going to reconnect that. And I do believe we are finished with this commission. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I, while I don't hope you will <laughs> necessarily uh, use my style of drawing chibis to sell your own. I do hope you'll play around with it, experiment with it, use it as a starting point for your own art. I always want to encourage that.
If you enjoy my art, if you would like a commission of your own, you can contact me via email and I can link that in the description below. Um, a commission like this would be $15 and if you would like, I can record it for you and it also includes the original. A lot of artists don't include the original and I don't understand why not, but I do. So a commission like this would include me nailing the commission to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more inking tutorials, make sure you check out my um, Art Snacks Inktober playlist as well as my Intro to Comic Craft playlist. And I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.